Will the rapture be blamed on radical Islam? Hmm. Uh, we were talking about this the other morning, my wife and I, and uh, I got to thinking about it and just wanted to make a quick little video to kind of offer a few little thoughts on this. And I'd like your input out there in the body of Christ. Uh, again, I think in, in the multitude of counselors, there's there's wisdom. There's, you know, I think as, as some of this stuff I, I like to share with my brothers and sisters online. Um, and I like to get your input and, and hear what you have to say. And if I'm off, then you say, yeah, brother, no, nah, I don't think you're right on that or whatever else. Uh, a lot of people say I'm not open to correction. Uh, quite on the contrary. Uh, I like to be corrected by my saved brothers and sisters in Christ. And uh, there's plenty of those out there. Uh, we don't have to all agree on everything. Um, recently got a, a very nice book from someone that I've had some strong disagreements with, and he's disagreed with me. I appreciate that. Okay. Um, sees enough value uh, with my ministry to say, hey, I don't agree with you on everything, but I think you're doing some good work. Here's a book. So I appreciate all my brothers and sisters in Christ. I don't like false converts. They irritate me. They're the ones that I attack when I get very vicious and everything else. But we talking about them in this study. A couple things to consider here. Okay, What is the rapture? The rapture is an instantaneous boom, we're gone. Right. Um, very much symbolized by Enoch in the Old Testament where you have um, he was not found because God took him. God translated him, it says in the New Testament, the book of Jude. He was called up to heaven. All right. And you have John, he's there on the island of Patmos, there in Revelation chapter 4, and he says he sees, looks up and he sees a door in heaven and he hears a voice, as it were, a trumpet, and it says, come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. And immediately, Paul says, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, boom, it's going to be very quick, like that. Okay, I'm just going to step to the side like this, and I'm going to play a video right here, and it's going to be graphic. So, uh, you know, not for small children and things like this, but let's watch this video here. I'm going to continue talking while it's playing. Um, you're seeing here a... Islamic terrorist and he walks up there's a police officer standing there and all of a sudden boom there he goes uh, he was a suicide bomber uh, he exploded himself he had explosives on his person and he comes walking up and, poof, and detonates himself now with as many CCTV cameras that are out there okay these surveillance cameras and Big Brother watching everywhere um, somebody somewhere is going to get a Christian Bible believing Christian on video disappearing and you know I believe what's going to happen at the rapture I believe that our clothes are going to be left behind and our blood's going to be left behind I do not believe that our bodies are going to be left behind because our body is changed all right um, we're going to basically mimic what happened with Jesus Christ his body was not left behind all right his blood was left behind he shed his blood on the cross it's gone all right so and I know the Bible says flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. All right, so you say, well, flesh and blood. Yeah, but here's the thing. The Bible says that our flesh is changed. It doesn't say anything about our blood. So the life of the flesh is in the blood. So I believe, and you know, it's just a theory. I'm not going to teach this as, if you don't believe this, you're not saved. Of course not. You know, but I believe that the rapture happens. It's going to be bloody clothes that are left behind. Now, is it just going to be like, and down it goes, you know, just kind of down. Or is it going to be a like that? What if it's like that? What are people going to think it is? They're going to think it's a suicide bombing. Give you a couple points here. There's some interesting little things to think of. First of all, we have this war that's been going on now for... Um, well over a thousand years uh, after basically the Roman Catholic Church created Islam as uh, kind of a they'll do this thing they create enemies to try and go in and overtake certain things and then hopefully they can control the enemy but they did that and Islam kind of got out from under the control of the Roman Catholic Church I believe that the Islam was originally created through Muhammad um, to take over the Arabic people they were just pa basically pagan tribes and things and um, Islam, it's funny, they have a holy city, just like the Vatican. They both venerate Mary. 
uh, just same thing, you know, there with the Roman Catholic Church. Uh, there's a lot of tie-ins between Islam and Roman Catholicism. But what happened is those people, you know, the Bible talks about Ishmael and his descendants, that Ishmael is going to be a wild man and no man's going to be able to tame him. So, so it is with the descendants of Ishmael, all right, the son of Abraham and Hagar, the Egyptian. And that son, those Arabic people, are very wild. And, of course, today we have them as, as Islam. And, of course, there's, you know, people say, well, Muhammad, you know, there was some, you know, he was like a Gentile or something like this, some kind of, he had like orange hair or something. Um, there's a whole lot of stuff with this whole thing. But the, my point is that that's important. Islam was created by Roman Catholicism. I firmly believe that. And they got out of control. And they went off to kill the Jews, and they started to kill Catholics, too. And you have this war, the Crusades, uh, between Roman Catholicism and radical Islam. And as I said in the previous video, that war is still going on right now. Um, the Roman Catholic system is in control of the United States military. Uh, more proof on that later. But uh, this Roman Catholic crusade of today, the war on terror, they're going out, we're already in this end times war to destroy Islam. And you see Islam, they, they make it look really, really powerful and there's a lot of them, but they're also bringing them into key positions, putting them in through integration into different societies so that that anger of the people rises up. Because most Americans, most you know, Europeans and things, we don't want to go to war. You know, What do I want to do? Leave my wife and son and go off and fight some stupid war someplace? You know, We don't want to do that. But all of a sudden, if you bring Muslims in and they start to do their Sharia law stuff and all this other all these other things and they start to do all this violent stuff. Now you get mad and you go, there's no choice. We have to go to war with these people. See, this whole thing's being orchestrated. And of course, you know, the Lord's sitting back there allowing this thing to happen and stuff and, and you know, understand this stuff if you're a Bible-believing Christian. It's not that the Lord's not in control. The Lord controls everything and He's going to bring it all about to His purposes uh, in the end. But right now, there's this war between Catholicism and Islam. All right? It's going to get much worse in the future. Now, here's the theory. Uh, I talked with Eric John Phelps. He knows he's probably the world's greatest authority on the Jesuit order. And he said that his belief is that at some point in time, when the Muslims are fully integrated into society, and they're out there, oh, we're about peace, we're not, we're not violent, we're not bad, and things like this, and, you know, and all this stuff, yeah, right. And they're out there integrated into society. What they're going to do is, and it's only if, when God gives them permission to do this, right now there's the Mosque of Omar there in Jerusalem on the Temple Mount. That thing, and I know people say, well, they could build a temple beside it or some other place or something. I don't believe that for one minute because I think it plays into end time prophecy. That dome right now, they're, they're writing stuff in Israel as, I mean, this is like the last day or two. They're coming out saying that Jerusalem is a holy site for the nation of Israel and for the Christians, and the Muslims have no rights to it. And the Muslims are saying, no, that the Dome of the Rock there, the Mosque of Omar, that's the spot where Muhammad, this horse, came and flew him up to heaven there to be with Allah, the moon god, you know, and all of his whores up there waiting for him. But, <clears throat> that, you know, that's what they say. So you have this war going on for that spot there this Mosque of Omar. I believe, this is what Eric John Phelps says, and I think he's right in this, if they get Muslims fully integrated into all the different countries, which they're working on, I mean, we actually saw, I think I said this in one of my other videos, we actually saw a Muslim immigrant right up the road at the post office the one night. My wife and myself and my son walked up to the post office, and uh, there's a Muslim immigrant in the winter. So it's like, Okay, they're getting these people integrated everywhere. Blow up the Mosque of Omar, the Dome of the Rock thing, and Mecca and Medina, and blame it on America. And what will happen is you will have, Muslims will just go crazy. They'll just go absolutely berserk, and it'll start this war. All right, now, in the midst of that war, if the rapture happens, see, 
it's going to look like this ultimate, you know, suicide bombing thing. And they'll have some of the stuff on, on video. And Christians all over the place leave. And there's bloody clothes left behind. Like a suicide bombing would be. Like we saw earlier, that little video clip I showed. All of a sudden, boom, here's some CCTV camera catches it. Poof, we're gone. And they look and there's all just a bunch of blood and clothes laying there. And word comes out, all the babies have gone. All the babies have left, which I think is going to happen. It's going to make the atmosphere for the Antichrist to come. And now he's no longer being hindered by the body of Christ. We're not letting him anymore, uh, which is... King James Bible word meaning hindering, stopping him from showing up. Um, we're gone. And now he can step onto the scene and he can come in as the good guy to clean up the mess that uh, has been left by this war and things. And again, you see 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, they're saying, when they shall say peace and safety, you know, that sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child and they shall not escape. So there's a thing of people saying peace and safety. That either means that they're saying we have peace and safety or we need peace and safety. And I tend to go with the second thing there. But again, another very interesting thing. But I find it also very interesting that more and more people are comparing us to Islamic extremists. You know, of course they try to, I get called all kinds of things. You know, I'm some radical uh, backwoods mountain man. I get called that one. I like that one actually, but... And then they say I'm a Jewish rabbi because I look like Jewish, you know, or something, Ashkenazi Jew or something like this. I don't mind that one really that much either. But then the people have been saying I look like some kind of radical Islamic terrorist. And I'm going, huh? <laughs> you know, I've made videos against Islam. You know, I am vehemently against Islam. Islam is a satanic cult. All right. Why would you call me an Islamic extremist? And it's, you know, some of the, this crowd, the easy believism crowd, they're now starting to call me, like, act like I'm some kind of radical, oh, wild eyed Islamic extremist. I find that very interesting. These false converts are calling me an Islamic extremist. I find that to be very interesting. But uh, here's another little interesting piece of this puzzle. Right here, I have an article. Um, let's see if I'll put this thing in here so you can see it okay this is um, 17th of February 2017 by Thomas D. Williams PhD uh, the Pope Francis says Muslim terrorism does not exist all right let me read the article look part of it here uh, he says down here quote no people is criminal or drug trafficking or violent Francis said while also suggesting, as he has on other occasions, that terrorism is primarily a result of economic inequalities rather than religious beliefs. Right, right, right. But here's the thing. Listen to this quote. The Pope also reiterated his conviction that all religions promote peace and that the danger of violent radicalization exists equally in all religions. There are fundamentalist and violent individuals in all peoples and religions. Hmm. And with intolerant generation generalizations, they become stronger because they feed on hate and xenophobia. <laughs> Modern words. He said, "Okay, I'll show you the quotes right there. You can see that. I hope. Okay. Not real high tech right now. Just you know, normally I'd put up a screenshot, but." I printed the thing out there. So, think about this. If you are a King James Bible-believing Christian, are you a fundamentalist? Yes. I mean, the fundamentals of the faith is just, you know, the virgin birth, the deity of Jesus Christ, His blood atonement. I mean, it's just like, well, yeah, you know, obviously. <laughs> it doesn't make me radical. It just makes me, a, I believe the Bible, you know. Um, but I'm called a fundamentalist. Interesting. And yet the Pope comes out and he says, all religions have fundamentalists and all of them can become radicalized and extreme. So what is the Pope going to say when the body of Christ leaves at the rapture? In a moment, the twinkling of an eye? Bloody clothes left? Just a thought. Just an interesting little thought here. 
How about another thing, another little tidbit of this. Um, what's the average mental condition of Bible-believing Christians right now? Um, happy to be alive, looking forward to the future here on this earth? Or just like, oh, I'm so vexed, I want to get out of here so bad. <laughs> the latter, you know. Uh, we're anxious to leave. Again, uh, do you see how the media can play off of this? Here's all these Christians and we're all just going like, oh, I'm so sick and tired of this world and everything else, you know. And, um, you know, and we're not suicidal or anything like that. We, we're not going to blow ourselves up, you know, purposefully to hurt people, walk up to a police officer and blow him up or something. Of course not. Of course not. Christians are not violent like that. All right. Um, as I talked about in a other video, the only quote-unquote violence a Christian should ever be engaged in is if somebody's coming after you or your child or something like that, well, then get real violent on them. Um, but that's defending yourself, not being aggressive and going out to wage some holy war or something on somebody else. Uh, that's not there for a Christian. But certainly the media could spin it and they could say, I remember this, you know, Brian Denlinger, he was always so tired of this world and he was always saying how much he wanted to leave. And, and so they, him and, and his followers, you know, they did this suicide bombing thing and we're not sure. We think he might have actually been getting into radical Islam or radical, you know, fundamentalism or something like this. But see, they could blend it right in with the war on radical Islam and just continue you know, and actually up the game against Islam because it's going to be, the rapture when it happens, is going to be totally random. Uh, it's going to be, you know, all over the world. I believe that there are saved people in each country. Um, not a whole lot, but, you know, I think that there are definitely saved people out there in all the different countries. And when the rapture hits, it's just going to be like, I mean, you know, you see these, you know, some Muslim nut, you know, gets a machete and goes and hacks somebody in, in, on a train in Germany or something just the other day. And, and uh, it's like, you know, international news, you know, and stuff. What happens when you get, you know, probably a couple thousand, maybe a couple you know, hundred thousand or so Christians? It's not going to be in the millions, you know. I don't believe that. Uh, as we get closer to the rapture, you see more and more of the falling away and just like, wait a second. I thought that person was saved and they're clearly demonstrating that they're not. Uh, it's incredible. But let's just say a couple hundred thousand people all of a sudden, all instantaneously at the same time, boom, suicide bombing. They're depressed. They're sick and tired of the world, you see, wanting Jesus to come and all this other stuff. And you get all these fine uh, Christians left behind. There's the Pope. There's Rick Warren. There's Joe Olstein. You know, I don't know if Billy Graham will still be alive till then or not, but <clears throat> you see what I'm saying? Oh, it's just that radical minority, those King James only people. I told you that they were a cult. You know, I remember doing this study, the post-trib rapture thieves study years ago, and there was this Greek Orthodox priest, and he was like talking about pre-trib rapture believers. And he's like, um, actually, he's like, I think that uh, this pre-trib rapture belief could actually lead some of these people to become uh, violent, rather violent. So a lot of these modern you know, phony baloney uh, professing Christians are already thinking that we're violent. Again, you know, I had that put on me, you know, these Satanists across the way over here, these charismaniac devils uh, put on their huge rock concert out here, you know, in this little small town. And, and uh, I was complaining and, and, I, and uh, I called the police and the police weren't doing anything. And we were over here preaching against them and stuff. And, and I was quoting scripture and yelling at them and things. Videos on my backup channel. You can see what happened. And uh, they finally called the police on me, and they said I was violent. And one of the reasons was because at the time I had one of my, you know, just old T-shirt on. I had a Ruger T-shirt on, you know. He's violent, you know, because he's got a gun T-shirt. Uh, T-shirts don't shoot bullets, okay? You know? <laughs> but see, that's what they'll put on people like me. He's radical. He looks like an Islamic extremist. I mean, did you see how angry he gets? I'm afraid, you know. And this, this little weasel loser, one of Ed Fenninger's little uh, buddies, you know, uh, Kevin Zacker is the guy's name. And he was one of the ones that came out. I, some brother sent me, like, 
He's like, check this guy out. He's saying that you're like an Islamic extremist or something. He reminds me of an Islamic extremist. And he's also like, uh, you know, uh, what do you say? Something about, I'm worried for their son, you know, our son. <laughs> you know, he's worried for our son because I'm radical and stuff like this. See? And this, by the way, is this Kevin Zacker guy. It's like his wife and children left him. It's kind of funny. But he's worried for my son. <laughs> Real winner there. But, uh, you know, see, see how these lost people are doing this thing? They're trying to make us look like we're radical and dangerous. And, and you know, how many of you out there have had relatives say, I'm worried about you? See what I mean? Um, and another point I want to make here, uh, just trying to see, uh, another thing is, of course, trauma puts people into a very easy to control mindset. So when that rapture actually happens, um, people are going to be a lot more gullible, a lot more easy to believe things. And uh, the strong delusion that God sends upon people, Second Thessalonians chapter 2, God sends them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness, the Bible says. Um, that strong delusion could actually be that rapture event because you're going to have so many people left behind that thought that they were saved. The, all these false Christians out there, there's going to be just you know millions. And if you include Roman Catholicism, it's going to be well over a billion. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of people thinking that they're saved and they're not saved. Uh, and it's not because we have some special little thing or something like that. We want everybody to be saved. I'd like to see everybody in the world get saved. I know it's not going to happen according to the Bible, but, you know, broad is the road which leadeth unto destruction, and many there be which go in thereat, the Bible says. The road to heaven is very narrow, and few there be that find it. Um, I'd like to see everybody get saved. I'm not trying to hide things and keep things from people. I just simply know what real salvation is, and unfortunately most people don't believe in it. Um, so my whole point is, uh, you know, I just, I thought, I want to just put this out there just as a little bit of a, you know, when the catching away does happen, I'm sure they're going to be using some of my videos and some of the other brethren out there that have done videos and just, you know, to try and spin this whole thing and say, oh, it wasn't the rapture, it wasn't the rapture, you know, it's just a bunch of crazy people killed themselves because they were so depressed and, and whatever else. You know, and again, I got to say this, you know, you see these modern Christians or these post-trib Christians and they're like, you know, we're going to suffer in the future. I mean, here we've had it so good. We don't know what suffering's like, but it's coming in the future. And I'm going, we don't know what suffering's like. Are you kidding me? You know, uh, if you're a Bible believing Christian, you know what suffering is like. You've had the dealings, dealings with family. You, you live in pain. Some of you out there, you're married to lost people. You know what suffering's about. You know, and you say, yeah, but we haven't gone through inquisitions or torture and stuff like that. Well, in some ways that can be easier. Okay. You get taken off someplace and tortured for two or three months and then executed. Uh, how about compare that to living in our current present world and being vexed on a daily basis for 10, 20 years and having family turn against you and having friends turn against you and having, you know, financial problems and health problems and all kinds of other stuff. I mean, which do you want? You know, the, the fast torture and death or do you want slow torture you know like most of us go through all of us go through if you're saved so just an interesting theory i'd like to hear your thoughts on this one this is a you know just something that kind of occurred to me the other day like i said and, and it's just like you know i wonder i wonder if that's what they're going to say that it was some kind of a suicide bombing of radical terrorist fundamentalists and stuff like this i think that that's a good you know, argument. You know, I know I know a lot of people say they're going to show up with UFOs and everything else, and you know, the UFOs will roll out at the same right after the rapture happens, and they'll say, you know, we had to abduct these people. Here's your new age, you know, Messiah, and he comes beaming down. Or, eh, I don't think so, because see, then they would make us look like poor innocent victims that were vaporized by these evil UFOs. Uh, I don't see it that way, because Revelation chapter six talks about. Uh, the saints that go into that time period there, um, that they're slain for the testimony of Jesus and for the Word of God. People are going to realize after we leave 
this was the right book. Because they're not all going to be deceived. Only those who have pleasure in unrighteousness. God sends them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. But they're people that don't love unrighteousness. Good moral people. And there are some people out there that are good and moral and everything else. They just haven't come to the Lord as sinners in need of a Savior. See? But you get those people and all of a sudden, boom, this event happens and they're going, it was a suicide bombing. And these people are going, it doesn't sit right with me. I knew that guy. He was a good guy. He wasn't radical. He witnessed to me that one time. I said, I want to hear it. And he said, oh, okay. You know, I just, you know, here's a gospel tract. And I refused it. And he said, okay, fine. I, you know, sorry about that. Didn't mean to tick you off or anything else. And, you know, whatever. And you're going to have people remembering your testimony. They're going to remember my testimony. It's a great challenge to all of us. And, you know, those people that get left behind, they're going to think, oh, I remember that guy. I remember that woman. Hmm. And you might have friends and family and stuff that start to go through your belongings and they'll look and they'll say, huh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take that Bible. This is going to be my Bible now. I'm going to read through this and what did they have written over here? And What you leave behind, brethren, could mean the difference between people taking the mark of the beast and being damned or people coming to the truth. Think about that. You say, well, then I better get busy writing things down and, and maybe get a camera and make some recordings or whatever. Well, that stuff's good, but uh, also your testimony. What kind of a testimony are you leaving behind? How are people going to remember you? Are they going to believe that you could have been a crazy terrorist and stuff? I mean, I, I realize that there are people that love unrighteousness. They'll believe whatever the media tells them. They'll, they'll, they hate you. You know, there's, there's, I mean, there's whole groups of people now that hate me, you know, it's just, the numbers increase all the time. I mean, I'm, I'm amazed at how many people just come out and just hate my guts now. Uh, there's like whole clubs of them. Um, you know, I'm not there for those people, but, uh, I think about some of the people that are, you know, Catholic or, uh, other people out there and stuff and they're kind of on the fence and they go yeah I, th I think Brian's a good guy but I, I just I can't agree with him or whatever I pray for those people I hope that after the rapture happens they realize you know I'd like to see them go up at the rapture but if they don't make it I hope that they realize that uh, I was telling them the truth and I was their friend and I hope that they get saved I really do um, I try to leave a good testimony behind uh, you know, again, people have caricatured me as some radical, wild-eyed, you know, I hate people in the area and stuff like this. Not at all. Um, I'm a very, very nice guy. Uh, try to be a, a good neighbor and whatever else. Yes, I witness to people. Yes, people get irritated with me because of my gospel signs. Whatever. Um, but, you know, just trying to encourage you out there. Try to, try to exhort you. Uh, think about the testimony that you're going to leave behind. Let people think you're weird. Whatever. But, uh, I don't know, just something to think about. But uh, it could be the possible explanation that they're going to come up with for the rapture. I don't know. just thought that was kind of an interesting thing. So uh, let me know what you think in the comments. I really want to have some good conversations on this one. Um, Maybe not going to be able to answer everybody's comments, but I'm just saying I'd like to get some thoughts from you out there on this. So that's going to be it. Thank you for watching.